Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Monday here on this program, and we got a lot of news to get into here today because it was a very busy weekend, as I'm sure you're all well aware. SummerSlam 2022 is in the books. We have got the Ric Flair's last match show. And I think it's pretty safe to say that was Ric Flair's last match. And if it's not, I don't know what to say about that. But we're going to go with the presumption that that was Ric Flair's last match. So we can do full results of both of those shows. We have got Raw coming up tonight. And, of course, this is the first. This is really the first, I would say, Triple H show. Granted, Vince has been gone for well over a week, but... Vince Vince had been booking towards SummerSlam. And they made some changes, obviously, at SummerSlam. EO Sky has debuted. Dakota Kai has been rehired. Bailey has returned. Becky Lynch has turned babyface. They're going full bore into that women's division. And uh, it's noted there were some changes. But there were also a lot of things in the show that it was Vince McMahon's vision. But the show is now over, and so we have got Raw tonight. We've got SmackDown coming up on Friday. We have nobody coming in to tear up the scripts, and things are different. How different they will be is a story we can talk about six months down the road, a year down the road. We'll see little changes here and there, little positives, and I'm sure perhaps some negatives as well. But we'll talk about that here today. We've also got... Well, let's see. I watched Tom versus Lance Archer, Tom versus Jonah, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, and uh, SmackDown and Rampage. I watched a lot of stuff this weekend. Did a lot of driving. But I'm back and ready to go. So back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Before we get into the shows, I do want to say that on uh, Saturday, I was watching SummerSlam, and uh, Becky Lynch took the jaded... And landed sideways. She landed on her side. And having separated my shoulder twice wrestling, I knew immediately that was not good. And she started grabbing her shoulder, and she was grabbing her shoulder throughout the rest of the match. And uh, we can confirm today that she did suffer a shoulder separation. I don't know the uh, extent of it. Uh, There are several grades of shoulder separation. If you... If you end up with the, I think it's like a grade, I think it's grade three is the worst, and grade one is the least bad. It might be the other way around, but regardless, if you get the worst version, then you're Kota Bushi, and you can't bench press the bar after months and months and months. If you get the, the uh, lowest grade, you may be able to work through it. So it depends on, uh, on how serious. She did finish the match. And she was using her arm, and she was favoring it, but she was lifting and doing all of her spots. So I'm hoping it is uh, it is an injury that she can come back from very quickly. So that's the update there on Becky Lynch. And with that out of the way, would you guys like to talk about SummerSlam or Ric Flair's last match first? Anybody? Are you, are you taking an instant poll? I'll take an instant poll. What that's do you right. say? Yeah. Well, you don't get a vote now because the the chat just exploded. Everybody wants to talk about Ric Flair's last I match. had a feeling. I had a feeling. We'll talk about SummerSlam next, everybody, but yes. Yesterday was Ric Flair's last match, and with the exception of the women's match, because I was busy refereeing my own women's match here at the house, I saw every match on the show. And the undercard, the undercard was a solid undercard, where nobody really got a lot of time, with the exception of the uh, the Ray Phoenix, Bandito, Laredo Kid, and Black Taurus. They did give 11 minutes and 50 seconds. And man, you never saw so many spots in an 11 minute and 57, or 50 second match. And I'm not even saying that in a bad way. It was awesome. It was by far the best thing on the show by miles. But other than that, it was just a bunch of, of shorter matches. Motor City Machine Guns beat the Wolves. 10 minute match. Good, solid match. Killer Cross beat Davy Boy Smith Jr. Five minutes. Just two big dudes dropping each other on their heads. Choke finish. 
It was fine. Jonathan Gresham, Alan Angels, Takeshita, and Nick Wayne. Five minutes. They did everything you could do in five minutes, which is not a lot. Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson versus Ricky Morton and Kerry Morton. Seven minutes. And just a lot of heat on Kerry. Ricky got the hot tag. And then he, uh, I think he might have got hit by, by a gimmick. He was hit from behind for sure. And then Brock Anderson pinned him. So Ricky Morton doing the job here. And before we go any further, I just want to mention that only eight years separates Ricky Morton and Ric Flair. For those of you that saw this show, eight years was all that separated these two men. And it's not like Ricky Morton lived a, you know what I'm saying? Ray Phoenix beat Bandito Laredo Kid in Black Taurus. He hit his finisher on, of all people, Black Taurus, which was quite the physical feat. Match was fantastic. Go out of your way to watch that one. Josh Alexander and Jacob Fatu. This match was really good, and then they had a horrible finish. They went 10 minutes, and then dudes just ran in. Everybody booed. It was a DQ. It was the lamest finish you ever saw in your life. Jacob Fatu looked awesome in this match. Josh Alexander is always excellent. This was very good until this horrific finish. And then uh, Diamond Dallas Page jumped the rail and uh, hit a diamond cutter on Matt Cardona. And DDP, 66 years old, everybody. 66 years old. Which means seven years separates DDP and Ric Flair. Seven years for those of you that watch this show. Briscoes beat the Von Erics. They got about seven minutes. It was fine. The Briscoes are fantastic. And, you know, the Von Erics, you know, it was the Battle of Farmers. That's what this really was. <laughs> then we had Jordan Grace beating De- Deanna Parazzo and Rachel Ellering. I did not see that match. And then the main event. Ric Flair, Andrade El Idolo against Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. And... You want to see a physical specimen who could still work? Jeff Jarrett. That dude impressed me. 55 years old. And boy, he he was... That guy can throw punches. He can move. And he's not even a regular. That, that's, a, that's, that's like a part-timer that's, that's doing like executive work for WWE. Well, let's talk about Rick. The moment he came out on the ramp, God bless him, he looked about 100 years old. And he was not moving well at all. And he did not look healthy at all. And dude, I actually made a cameo on the show that I was unaware of where I was on this show and I was talking about what he was doing when he was training with Jay Lethal and how impressed I was when I saw that footage. And, you know, he was taking bumps and he was doing spots and and it was a totally... Totally different Ric Flair that got in the ring on on Sunday night. And as, as appalled as people are that watched that match, because Ric Flair, I mean, when the match was over, he said to Andrade, I passed out. And, uh, and I think for a while he may have actually been unconscious in that match. It was, it was not good. And as appalled as people are, and there are a lot of people appalled, at what happened on Sunday night. The fact of the matter is, if the Ric Flair that had done those training videos with Jay Lethal, if that Ric Flair, and that was not that long ago, that was like a month ago, two months ago, if that guy would have been in the ring on Sunday night, I don't think people would have been appalled. And I think, honestly, that if the Ric Flair that was there Sunday, if that Ric Flair had been in those training videos, I'm not even sure this match would have ever taken place. So I know people are are very upset with, you know, Flair being allowed to go in the ring and everything like that. But, I mean, honestly, if you watch those training videos, it was, it was I don't want to say night and day, but it was very, very different than what we got on Sunday night. I was terrified. I was petrified the entire match. I was wondering why there was no one there to keep an eye on Ric Flair when he would go down and not move for extended periods of time when everybody else is doing spots in the ring. And uh, he was lifted up to the top rope for a superplex. He uh, decided he didn't want to take it, and so he went back down to the mat. Jay Lethal gave him a vertical suplex, and as God is my witness, he never he never got to his feet again the entire match. 
everything from that point forward was crawling and laying there. And uh, that probably was when he passed out, as he claimed to Andrade. And uh, this has got to be the end, dude. It's got to be the end. You forgot about the fact that he was bleeding like a stuck pig. Well, yeah, he did. He did bleed. Which also is probably one of the reasons he was laying there like that. And he was drinking all weekend long. I'm sure there was an adrenaline dump. I'm sure he was banged up during training. But it was a long emotional weekend that then ended with the match. I, there were a lot of people I know that benefited from this weekend. So, you know, the fact that they put the whole convention on and everything that was surrounding it, that was cool with me. I never needed to see Ric Flair back in the ring, you know, after Shawn Michaels, let alone after the deal he did with Hulk Hogan in, in Impact. But that's Ric Flair. So it's one of those things where you can't stop this man from doing what he wants to do. A medical board could, but there was none that did. And we see his training. For what he's been through, it was amazing. But I still didn't need to see it. But it was as simple as you either ordered it or you didn't. And everything seems to be okay coming out of it. We haven't heard anything about anything with Ric Flair. But for me, the way I was able to tolerate it because I hated watching it. I hated it. David Crockett was so happy, and Doug Dillinger was there. And for a guy that grew up on all of that, that Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, that stuff, to celebrate that, that that was good. The match itself, it, it goes down in history with what it was. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, hey, at the end of the day, I mean, there was a lot of people there, and... I was told that, uh, I think it was Keith Mitchell. Was he the uh, the uh, impact guy? He, it was well, Keith Mitchell, yeah. right? Yeah. Keith Mitchell, yeah. I mean, long-time WCW world I confused him class. and Kevin Sullivan for some reason. But Keith Mitchell, <laughs> uh, he had retired, and uh, he actually came back to do this show. And uh, you, could, you could tell watching it. I mean, it looked packed. And the production looked very much like an impact show. And, you know, there were all sorts of, of names from the past that were brought back. And nostalgia-wise, I mean, I enjoyed the show. I liked the nostalgia, you know. A huge fan of David Crockett. I watched all those. I'm the biggest fan, maybe, of David you might, Crockett. You, you are. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hey, you know what? Andrade and Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett, they did a great job in the match. Undertaker was there. Mick Foley was there. Uh, obviously DDP because he made a run-in. Uh, Dolph Ziggler as Nick Nemeth was there. So they had a lot of names. And Boogie Woogie Man backstage. Jimmy and... Valiant was there. We never saw him, but he was there. Yeah. So I think and at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, Ric Flair, honest to God, I don't think he's ever going to wrestle again. Oh, no. And, uh, no. you know, Charlotte, she was there. And she didn't put her foot down on this match. But she did put her foot down on certain things like the dive to the outside, which in hindsight she didn't need to bother because it wasn't going to happen. But I'm pretty sure that his family would put their foot down if he tried to do this again after. I, after I that. would hope just for what everybody else I think in the world, I don't know, maybe, look, some people I guess were dying for a snuff film, but it, this was like watching like the Walendas, like Carl Walenda when he was old. Like, I, you know. And that didn't end well. And it's like there was part of this where it was being, and it wasn't, they weren't selling it directly this way. But when you watch the videos and everything, and you know what this guy has been through, and you think about what Ric Flair would do in a match, including Blade, when you have a heart that, I mean, it was being sold for a lot of people on, will this guy die, or we could see news or history or whatever you'd want to call it and it was macabre it was mm. but the flip side of watching rick flair my entire life if that would have been it for rick flair would he have been incredibly content with that you see how he talks about how imp at this point is it was so important for my career that Vince put the woo back in. It was so important. This match was the most important of my life. This is what he is. 
He is never anything else besides Ric Flair. And he was he when he stopped being Richard Morgan Flair a long time ago, this is this is what he is. So in that way, if it was going to be the end, I don't think could he have went out any other way with his entire family, his whole wrestling family, and really everything that how he looks at himself, whether for good or for a lot of times really bad, he's nature boy Ric Flair. Well, I will say this. My my point in all of this is I don't think you're going to see another Ric Flair match, but I would not be surprised. <laughs> you keep if, saying that. If, well, my point is Flair's not going to wrestle. To will, Can I finish here? Damn it. Flair. Well, like, go ahead. Flair, go ahead. Is, Flair is not going to wrestle again, but I am quite confident that Conrad is going to promote another show because, you know, the Flair match aside, the whole weekend was a big success, and I think everybody did very well. And I think that he's going to want to do this again. Will he do another show like this? Will he just do another independent show? What's he going to do? I have no idea. But this was, to me, clear. And, and actually, apparently, they're during the, uh, they had all those Q&As. And, uh, and I think during the Q&A, he jokingly asked Mick Foley if he wanted to do another match, which I think would be a bad idea. But, you know, I looked up and down that show, and, you know, would it be the worst thing to see DDP do one more match? Dude, I saw that guy. I wouldn't be worried about him doing another match. And, you know, I'm sure there are some other guys that, you know, they could they could arrange something to do something similar to this. So I think we will see another show uh, of this nature, but I don't think you're ever going to see The Nature Boy doing a match again. And by the way, you guys can take that to the bank. You guys don't believe this? Huh? You don't believe this? You didn't believe me when I told you everything's going to be fine with Bianca Belair. I told you guys this. I told you guys this in December. And nobody believed me. I told you this when she won the Royal Rumble. Nobody believed me. I told you this at WrestleMania. Nobody believed me. Now she's beat Becky Lynch clean in the middle at SummerSlam in front of 38,000 people. Unless you're Kane that it was 48,000 people. Are you going to tell me she's not doing well now? Huh? Should I talk about SummerSlam? Or do you have more to say about the Nature Boy? I'm just amazed that you had to to really ram home the bridge of Ric Flair's not going to have a last yeah, match to get to the fact that Conrad's going to promote another show again. No kidding, he's going to. This was his fifth one. What, has he booked it? What do you mean, no kidding? Of course we're going to have another match. You know what? Maybe it's going to be Brian Alvarez's last match. Are you free? I could use an opponent. Hey, listen, all you have to do is lay on the mat for 15 minutes. Huh? What kind of rules is this under? Can we wait for a GCW type of weekend and we can actually do what you, you would want like to do? You want to do a barbed wire match? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, we could actually mix things since we could we can merge blood sport with that. Weren't you just talking about how you're trying to talk your kid out of wanting to cut himself and now you're oh. you want to do your only match as a barbed wire match? I I, uh, I I don't want I my guess kid to cut himself. Proud. As far as me cutting others, I mean, in certain cases, I think that would be fine. That would be fine. Why don't you talk about SummerSlam? Well, if that's though, the case, I got you a match. You were right on Bianca Belair. I got a match. Me and John Moxley uh-huh. against you. Who would I want for your partner? Oh no, I get to choose. Maybe Craig. I would get to choose. No, 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 no. I get. But to anyway, choose. Moxley's gonna hold that blade. No. You ain't gonna be cutting nobody. Oh, you can. I'm gonna go bring ahead. in the Ripper. Go. Hey, one of us is a lot more vain about our looks than the other is, pal. So if, I'm not if the one anybody would my worry microphone. about that match, it would be you. Okay, let's talk about SummerSlam. So this show was really good for about uh, an hour and a half. And then it became an old school uh, Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn, excruciatingly along, 85,000 video packages, dudes coming out to fake the attendance, insufferably long ring entrances. The whole nine yards. But it started out really good. Old Man River. I was so He's excited. Old Man River. I was so excited when this show started because it's the first Triple H pay-per-view. <laughs> and literally, the show starts and Becky's music hits. They didn't have a video package. We didn't have 15 minutes of rigmarole. It was like they got her down to the ring. Then they got Bianca down to the ring. And then they had a very, very good match. And they got 15 minutes. And Bianca beat her clean in the middle after going back and forth. And then 
when it's over, Bailey's music hits. So Bailey comes down the aisle. And then Dakota Sky, who had been fired, she got rehired. She comes down the aisle. And then the music hits and out comes the former Io Shirai, who is now Io Sky, which like a lot of people are, are furious about. But listen, everybody. This is it's some of this is a Vince thing, like when Vince gets weird about, you know, I don't want anyone to be called junior. OK, but I'm sure that Nick Khan and Stephanie, they're probably the ones behind. Listen, we got to brand these people. They all have to have a new name. We don't want them leaving and using their WWE name somewhere else. Everybody's going to get a new name. And Io Shirai was the queen of the sky, right? That was her gimmick. So yeah. now she's Io Sky. I don't think this is the end of the world. I don't know why everybody is up in arms about this one. You should be happy that she got immediately signed to a main roster contract and got called up the second Vince was out of there. should be happy about that. Who cares what her name is? That's you could true. call her Hot Dog Ferguson for all I care. She's on the main roster and she's going to be wrestling. So they came out and I was like, my God, look at this. He brought back Dakota. He brought up EO. Bailey's back. Becky has turned babyface. She's a babyface again, thank God. Bianca beat Becky and is a big, huge star. Like, this women's division is on fire. It's the first thing that happened on SummerSlam. I was over the moon with joy. Then Logan Paul beat The Miz in a good match. 15 minutes. And, you know, Logan Paul looked great at WrestleMania, but, bro, he's in there with, uh, you know, Rey Mysterio and... and uh, but this was a singles match with The Miz, who is not renowned for his singles matches. Hey. And they he's not. And they had a good match. Logan Paul beat him. He did so much impressive stuff that, believe it or not, they actually cheered Logan Paul beating The Miz. He was a baby face when this was over. We'll see how long that lasts. But uh, a good match. Give The Miz credit. He may not be great when it comes to your average everyday wrestling match but when it comes to these celebrity type of deals he is very very good and he did his job with logan paul perfectly including getting that crowd to turn the heat back on himself more SummerSlam after this break everybody this commercial break to pay the bills for this national radio show which is called wrestling observer live observer.com where were we well hot dog ferguson bobby lashley in theory oh. Man, I got a love-hate relationship with the way they book Theory on this show because I'm sick of the guy. I'm glad that he didn't win the title. But, golly, holy smoke of moles. After, after having to sit through 45 minutes of Austin Theory segments on every show for the last month, what was the payoff? Should I add all that time up? 90 minutes a week for four weeks, 360 mm. minutes. Yes. That's six, uh, six hours of Austin Theory I sat through for the last month. Six hours! And what was the payoff? Well, he faced Bobby Lashley. Lashley squashed him, beat him with a hurt lock in five minutes. Then, as we'll get to later... It was awesome. During the main event, he ran out. <laughs> this idiot... <laughs> God bless the guy, but in storyline, he's an idiot. This idiot sees Roman Reigns down... And he decides, now's a great time to cash in. He runs down to the ring. Brock's right there. But bam <laughs> Kills him. He's dead. That was the whole Austin Theory gimmick on this show. In a last man standing match, all he had to do was wait till both guys were down, then run down and do that, I guess, and hit both in the head. If he can join mid-match like he was planning on doing, he could have waited to see what would have happened. But no. So no. I, I liked, you know, there was the aspect of me that liked that they didn't do anything with him on the show. But there was the aspect of me that was like, God, I, I sat through six hours for nothing. And now there's the aspect of, well, now he's still got the briefcase. They're going to keep going. Somebody, by the way, had a great idea. Which, uh, it doesn't really work because you don't actually have to give the contract to the referee. But uh, after the briefcase was obliterated, they were like, man, you know, Roman should get beat up and he's down and he's, he's dead. And Theory goes to cash in, but he tries to open the briefcase, but it's jammed shut because it's been smashed so badly in the last man standing match and he can't cash in. Uh -huh. that, uh, 
Anyway, you're not you're not looking at the uh, theory Lashley thing with the fact that Lashley didn't have to lose at any point to Austin Theory with the way the theory. Well, I'm been certainly booked. happy that Bobby Lashley's a champion. The guy's super yeah. over. The fans love him. Exactly, and it, and it looked awesome with him doing the roll into the ring and jumping up and then getting caught in the press slam down into the full Nelson. I thought that was that was cool. So I have no issue with this. You're going to have theory crammed down your throat anyway. So at least again, I don't know. Well, let's see how it goes tonight. They have made him look like a goofball. And yes, they made him look like less of a goofball in some ways, I guess, on Sunday night. But I, I, if it continues on TV, they have got to be doing the thing where they're tearing him down to build him back up again. Because otherwise, like, tonight should be the night Theory starts actually, like, kicking some ass and not being such a geek. Because Drew comes out there, he's a star. Bobby Lashley's a star. Roman Reigns is a star. You know, Brock Lesnar's a star. They're looked at as stars. Even Riddle, you know, Orton. He was not there, but Rollins, those guys, all of them are looked at, I think, in a better light than Theory is, and people believe in all of those other people far more than Austin Theory. So at some point, he's your guy of the future. You need to build stars. Let's start getting it going and actually making this guy a serious figure. We had the Mysterios beating the Judgment Day in a no disqualification match when as expected. Edge returned. Who is not, by the way, the Fiend. He returned. He helped the Mysterios win. He's a babyface. And I was watching the match, and he came back, and I thought, my God, with his new haircut and everything like that? I was like, this guy looks exactly like DDP, and he moves like him, too. And then, Scott's my witness, I saw DDP the next day on the uh, Ric Flair's last match show, and it was uncanny. So. Yoga? He should be doing yoga. If Edge's not doing yoga now, he should, because it's done wonders for old uh, DDP. Uh, Pat McAfee beat Happy Corbin. It was all right. It was not a great Pat McAfee match. Uh, He was sloppy on a lot of things. It wasn't a bad match at all. I mean, it was, you know, the match they did was was like a, you know, good match. I'd say it was pretty good. But he did, he was sloppy on things, and... He looked like a green wrestler, as opposed to before when he was like an outsider who blew you away with how good he was. Now that he's been doing matches, now he's going to be judged, and this will happen to Logan Paul as well, to the same standards of everybody else in the company. And uh, this was not a a great uh, Pat McAfee performance here. Yeah, but to be fair, for a lot of people that didn't see it, it's not like this was a Botchamania type of match because McAfee's such a great athlete. He was actually able to overcome it, like, you know, jumping up and he lands on his knees on the ropes, but then he's back up on his feet. And the wobble when he was going to do the dive to the outside, which... You know, that was, you know, the Taurus, was it Taurus and Bandito? No, it was Taurus and, uh, oh God, during the pay-per-view where he, he saved a man from breaking his neck. That dive by McAfee, I wish Corbin was a little bit more underneath him because, e. Okay, I should, uh, I should mention here very quickly that uh, I am not 100% confirming this, but since everybody is asking about it, I do have one source who is saying that, yes, Sasha and Naomi have made a deal to return. So we'll know more, I'm sure, within two hours. But I'll just say I think it's true. I'm pretty sure. But I can't say uh, I can't say it, 100%. And if anybody else at all, at Brian Alvarez, he loves answering questions about the boss. No, don't start this stuff. That's... <laughs> Uh, we had the Usos beating the Street Profits, and they just beat them. <laughs> it was, so I think I think they must be splitting them up. No, which is a funny story, but I, I don't. I told the story on the Brian and Vinny show, but essentially, like, ah, eh, it's a long story. Can they both go heel then? If that's what this is about, because Why obviously would they break up and both go heel. Because I would rather just have them somehow break up because I want to see Angelo Dawkins with MVP. So he has somebody besides almost. And I don't think Montez Ford needs anyone. And I just, I would rather see it that way than have Montez, the way this is being framed right now, turn on Dawkins. And then, I don't know. Dawkins is, look, he's gotten a lot better. 
and I think he can be something. He's big. There's a, a really an upside to him, but I would love to see him with MVP as somebody I think that, again, it helps out MVP immensely, too, by just having almost around. And you could actually – I can think of Dawkins and, like, Bobby Lashley would be something I would like to see. Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey. They got, like, four minutes. They got their time cut. I was told because of Logan Paul and The Miz – but they just, it was Ronda putting in one arm bar after another. Liv kept getting the ropes. Ronda got mad. Finally, she puts her in a straight arm bar. And Liv Morgan taps. But the referee is counting Ronda's shoulders. And so even though Liv Morgan tapped out before the pinfall, only the pinfall counted because that's what the referee saw. So Liv retained the title. And then Ronda beat up Liv, which is a heel move. Then she beat up the baby face, which was a baby face move. So we'll find out tonight or Friday. The referee. Or the referee. What did I say? The baby face. Yeah, well, Beating up the baby face is not a baby face move. Well, it's a baby face ref. Beating up the ref is a baby face move. But uh, we're going to find out tonight or Friday what the deal is with Rousey. But I think everybody knows the WrestleMania big match is going to be Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch. And if Becky Lynch is going baby face, Ronda Rousey should be turning heel sooner rather than later. She should just have done it anyway, for sure. And then uh, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, last man standing. Tables, chairs, a tractor. A tractor that was used as a forklift to uh, elevate the ring, and you know Roman Reigns tumbled out of it, which led to uh, exactly one half of the people who paid for front row tickets being unable to see the rest of the match because there was a ring it in It was their worth way. it. It was worth it. And uh, I liked it. I mean... <laughs> You know, some people didn't like it. I, I was, I was, I'll put it this way. Vinny really didn't like the match, okay? I was watching with Vinny. At the time, I was very irritated watching the match because there had been an hour, with the exception of the Ronda Rousey Liv Morgan five minute match, it was an hour of videos, entrances. Here comes Kane to lie about the attendance. Another video. Here's Roman Reigns taking six minutes to walk to the ring. Here's Brock Lesnar taking 12 minutes to drive a tractor. I'm like, bro, I'm. it's hot in this room. Get the show on the road, dude. So as I'm watching, I'm, I'm irritated. But then, you know, after it's over, and then you think back about what they actually did. I liked the match. You know, it was fun. They did all sorts of crazy things. They're teasing that it's the last time they'll ever wrestle, which this is a key. Because I've been right a lot, and people don't like to acknowledge it. I realize we've seen this match seven times. I realize that if somebody gets hurt, y'all think they're going to go back to Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, okay? I know you all think that. But listen, Vince is gone. He's done, okay? He's gone. They don't need to ever go back to this match again. Someone else in charge can find somebody else to face Roman Reigns or whoever. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I believe that Paul Heyman, who is a really smart guy who's been around the block, I believe that he believes that this is the last time they're ever doing a match because that dude took an F5 through a table. And he ain't doing that if he thinks in three months they're just going to do this match again. So I think everybody believes, and I think there's actually a very good chance that we don't ever see this match again, okay? And they pulled out all the stops. They destroyed ringside. They killed everybody. So uh, I thought it was fun. I think we could see this match again, but not for a few years and not until a WrestleMania. I don't even think they'll break this one out in, if the Saudis ask for it. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's better at this point. The Look, Saudis already saw it at least once. Well, you know, again, if they wanted to pay for it again, like I wouldn't even put that one on the table because... It's one of those things you have where, God bless them, if their bodies don't break down, I bet you in like three years, four years, Brock still looks pretty much the same. And even if he didn't, who cares? It would be Brock Lesnar if he came out there with a gigantic beer gut, but an even bigger hat. Nobody would give a crap because it's Brock. Roman's probably going to look the same in like four years. You could go back to it then. There are too many other people. There are too many other things you need to do and build up. And there are far, <laughs> there are just a ton of other ideas out there. Roman's still your champion. Brock is still Brock. 
Paul got laid out, which was awesome. And the match was a spectacle, and it wasn't all that great. But it, the whole show, it was okay. But the spectacle aspect of it is what made it for me, even with the time, even with it being long and all that stuff. It wasn't a great wrestling show, but as far as WWE goes, when you have Logan Paul and you have the Mysterios winning clean and like a lot of that stuff, well, I guess not clean with Edge, but regardless, look, I thought it was a decent enough night. If you're trying to put it up against Tokyo Domes or old manias or something like that, like... I don't know what to tell you, you know, but it's it's this is WWE now and prepare for two or three celebrities if they can fit them in on every tent pole show guaranteed. Well, that's uh, those shows we had smacked in as well, which is, uh, uh, you know, at this point, it's a uh, lame duck show. Tom, uh, Filthy Tom and I are going to be up at uh, four Pacific, seven Eastern today. And we'll talk about his G1 matches. And this week's show is just going to be a potpourri. Whatever we were able to watch, each of us, we're going to review. So there's no set schedule. So anyway, we'll talk about that more after the break. Observer Live. Roz, tonight feels like it's going to be hot. Hot. Yeah, the whole company feels hot right now. I'm so happy Vince is gone. (laughs) Have I mentioned that? Hey, look! It, it was I, just time, dude. It was I time. I know. And look, I and look. I, there's Besides nobody, all the other stuff, by the way, nobody I like more than than DJ Convoy on the board and on Twitter and all that stuff. Always been a great supporter of everything I've ever done. And I see him out there, and it's like he's got the same timeline you must do right now with some of the knuckleheads he has to deal with. And I think he's got to deal with people that are celebrating like everything's different, everything's changing. And no, it's not going to be. It's going to be a slow process, but. At least there's something, because as they showed with EO and Dakota coming back, okay, at least you're going to at least try. You're going to at least hear some of this, and at least I'm not expecting the world. I'm not expecting WWE to ever be my favorite wrestling promotion in any way, but as long as the shows are more fun and entertaining and easier to watch when they're three hours long... I'm for it. Give me some new stars. Give me some new stuff. I'm, I'm in. I'm a wrestling fan. I'm willing to buy in. We're out of time. Later today, 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, myself and filthy Tom Lawler, straight from the G1, will be live at twitch.tv. And I'm sorry, video.f4wonline.com. Sorry, Twitch homies. Video.f4wonline.com. Ah, you know what? I'll have it on all video platforms this afternoon, Twitch and YouTube. Woohoo! Four Pacific, seven Eastern. Join us to talk to Filthy Tom. Man Only for subscribers. Use your Amazon Prime to sign up for Twitch. You can get it free. Twitch.tv at 4W Video. Video.f4wonline.com. We'll talk to you later today. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>